here. Hi. How are Hi. you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. That's what are good. you up to? What do you have going on over there? Uh, on the wall. Yeah. Um, that's a, um, a craftsy class, the daydream quilt. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that. I love craftsy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm April um, and I'm a long armor too. And I'm just wanting to like get with other people that want to long arm or that are long armors and kind of like talk about it so that it's can you see me am i did i freeze up on you yeah yeah i'm sorry i live way out in the country and i'm trying to to do this but it, it's getting it's kind of tough with them um, living so far out yeah my grandma lives in the way country and she has the slowest internet in the world so i can understand <laughs> yeah i'm always trying to improve it but it doesn't seem to work <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so what I want to do is get with uh, long armors or people that want to learn how to long arm or want to know about long arms and kind of ask them questions and they can ask me questions and just like a conversation, you know, about long arming. Mm -hmm. Sure. Hey, why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think it'll be fun. Yeah. So tell me a bit about yourself. Tell me what got you started quilting. Well, um, when I was young, uh, my great grandmother would come and babysit me and my brother during the summer. And she worked in the sewing industry, sewing collars onto people's shirts. And uh, she would come over and she would bring like little squares that would go into a four patch or nine patch over. And she'd teach me how to cut them out and sew them together. And this was all by hand. Uh huh. And, uh, you know, after I got tired of sewing squares and we moved on to triangles and, you know, it sort of progressed from there. Um, and um, after that, my mom started to pick up quilting. And um, by that time, I was like seven. And that's when I really knew I wanted to do it because I could piece um, pinwheels better than she could. <laughs> so, you know, it really... Um, it was good that I started at a young age. Yes. Yeah. My kids have been in here with me since the beginning because I started quilting when they were babies. Mm -hmm. And um, my youngest son, um, he he wants to edit my videos. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He likes to sew, but he likes the editing part better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So what t what made you decide that you wanted to get a long arm? Um, a couple years ago, when I first um, learned about free motion quilting, um, I had a little tiny brother machine with only like a four inch throat space. And, um, you know, when you were just quilts, it was okay, you know, just to learn. Um, as people saw, you know, the things that I could piece together, they started wanting quilts for me to make um, for them. So I started, you know, needing more space because I was getting bigger and bigger quilts. So um, I got, um, you yeah, know, here we go, brain fart. Um, my grandma got me um, a brother 1500 machine and uh, that worked for uh, free motion quilting. And something, it just, something just wasn't there. It wasn't um fulfilling enough so we uh did some research and we got uh, a great a pinnacle frame and i put that machine on that and that worked great for a couple years and then um you know as the quilts rolled up and you know more quilts started to come in the and bigger quilts the space in that throat um got smaller and smaller <laughs> and it wouldn't work for yeah it wouldn't work for you know bigger pantograph design. So then we decided it was time to go big or go home. And we got a, a bigger long arm. And what kind of long arm is that? Um, a grace 15 R. Okay. Uh -huh. and and then, go ahead. Uh, and then we just 
when we started out, I just had the machine. It was just me and the machine. Um, and that's what I originally wanted to start out with. But uh, as I learned a little bit more about the computerized, and then, um, you know, I had went into ninth grade, you know, I had schoolwork and everything else. So we decided to get the computer on it. Yes. That's How where you, we're at right now. Do you like that? How are you doing adjusting to that? The, um, I really like the computer cause I can program it in. And if it's a flat quilt, I set it up and go do my schoolwork. Uh -huh. Um, but it's, uh, you can do a lot more with the computerized, but in a way it's sort of not you. Yeah. It's somebody else's work. So every once in a while I, um, do semi custom quilting where I, um, where the machine stitches the set i take the belts off of it and do custom border or a custom background fill so i'm sort of getting the best of both worlds yes have you watched that show with uh, yes, Linda every Taylor? Episode. yes she's the every best episode yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. um i i have this one's custom over here and then this one's computer right here it's new and I, I don't really, I haven't gotten any quilts in for it yet. I've just been playing around on it so far. But I, I like when I'm working over here, I'm like, I need to, I just need to like get in there and quilt, you know, like there's something relieving, refreshing or therapeutic maybe about that free motion quilting. Do you feel the mm -hmm. same? You're cutting out. Oh, do you feel like that with free motion quilting, it's more therapeutic? Did you miss me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I was saying, do you feel like with free motion quilting, it's more therapeutic? It, to me, it is. Um, um, when I do free motion quilting, I, it depends on the day. Sometimes I like to use the stitch regulated or sometimes I like to do the manual. Um, but I think on the days with the, you know, you get into it more because it's a, a repetitive sound of the motor and the stitches and the sound that the threads making as it's hitting the needle. And, you know, you can just fall in up at the clock and it's time to eat lunch already. Yes. Yes. So, you know. So, um, do you, I saw that you have an Etsy page. Do you, what do you sell on there? Um, uh, um, right now I'm doing, you know, small quilts or quilts that I was practicing my, um, computer on or free motion skills, but, um, I really want to, you know, quilts for other people that they can look at them and see what they want talk to me and I can make them something custom that isn't on the website that they could buy. And then I quilt and then go like that. A full service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, what do you, like, what are you working on right now? That's what are that you last working, part. What are you working on right now? Right now, uh, on the machine, I have a quilt, um, the long, tall quilt that Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics just did a video on. Um, I'm going to do semi-custom on that, and that'll probably end up um, be going up on my Etsy page. So that's what I'm working on today. So um, what, like, what makes you like excited? Is it like getting some fabric out or is it putting it on the frame or is it the whole process? To me, it's, it's the whole process when you're um, in the fabric store or in your stash or closet, when you're looking at fabric, you feel, you feel, you see all this color and you feel that inside you. And then when you're cutting it, you, you know, you have a different feeling. And then when you're sewing it together, you feel like you're creating something beautiful. And then when you put it on the frame, you're, you're adding the, um, the finishing coat to that painting. 
And yeah. so it's a full spectrum of wonderful emotions. That yeah. really that really makes the whole quilting and sewing process worth it. Now, do you do you have anything that you want to like improve on, like that you're um, wanting to learn, or is there something new that you want to get for your machine? Anything like that? Um, new? My machine, well, my frame is an older frame. It's the pinnacle frame that we had my whatever, and that's a ten year old frame. We got uh -huh. it. I got it used because new ones at the time were way out of the line. Is it but metal or wood? It's metal. Okay. It's, you know, it's a little better than the wooden ones. And we looked at that and the, that just wouldn't cut it. But, yeah. um, you know, the, since it's so, um, and older, the, the rails in the center are starting to bow. And, yeah. once, and once you roll the quilt, then you have a big old dippy do in the center. Then you have to get the soup cans out. <laughs> um, so, um, the one thing major right now is I'm every time I get a quilt, I put money in a savings account for a new frame. And one day, eventually, my dream machine is the Gamel Statler Stitcher. Oh, yeah. So that's that's in in my planning book. Yes, I I this is an Anova and the Anova and the mm -hmm. Gamel to me are pretty equal. Um I like I like this one just as well as the as the Statler. I would think um, it does where you can pro, you can make your own designs in the computer and mm -hmm. and stitch them out. So I think that that's a really good thing, and I think that the Gamel does that as well. But the look mm -hmm. of the Gamel, like this one's a Gamel, and I love the mm -hmm. frame. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. I had the same thing, um, but I had the wooden frame and I had my brother 1500 on the wooden frame and I put mm -hmm. a king size quilt on there. And like you say, you get to the middle and it starts to bow on you. Um, so I, I finally was able to get the, the gamble, this one right here. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I said, no matter what, I'm going to get a frame where it's not going to bow. And the, mm -hmm. the frame on the Gamel is better than the frame on the Innova by mm -hmm. far. Yeah. Well, that's, um, I really took notice to it the other day when I had a quilt, it was a king size quilt and the, they wanted minky on the back and then a, a layer of batting and then the quilt top. And that thing was this thick, but the center was, or that pole was, um, had a lot of weight on it. Yes. Yes. So, so if you, you know. do, do you have like a thread that is your favorite thread? Um, at one point when I first started out, it was signature thread, uh -huh. um, you know, because that was easy and it was available and, you know, this and everything else. Um, but as I watched, you know, Leah Day and um, what's her name just talked about, it. oh, Linda Taylor, yeah, you know, and other people, they, um, Leah Day especially, she used isocord thread and my local quilt shop supplies that. So one day I was working on a quilt and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to buy some isocord, you know, and that's okay. Isocord is expensive. Yeah. So I used that for a while and then I found out about Glide. And ever since then, I've been trying to switch everything over to thread and that's really working. Yeah, I like Glide is one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. How about what type of batting do you prefer? Um, right now, I am really into the Hobbs 8020 mm -hmm. batting, yes. but cotton does the same job. Do you order from Linda's? I, I don't because she's so far away. Uh -huh. um, I just go to... Uh, you know, Joann's or um, Hobby Lobby. And I make sure I go when there's a coupon in the pay. And so we get a discount, but yes. um, yeah, that's, um, but when I would um, go to Joann's and they have big rolls of batting in the bags, like 20 yard rolls. And I would um, get a coupon and it would go down to like $80 and I would buy that roll once the quilts were coming in, you, you know, you need batting for 
a king size quilt. Then you have to cut so many pieces and sew them together and fuse them. So I just thought it's um, a better bang for my buck just to go with the bags. Yeah. The pre cut bags. Um, have you tried Quilter's Dream? Oops, I think I lost you a little bit. Let's see. Hello? Okay, there you are. Are you back? Okay. Right. <laughs> Have you tried Quilter's Dream? Um, it's on my list. Um, I have it in... Uh, my list that I want to try. Um, I just haven't got around to it yet. It's, but it's, well, it's, it, it's nice. It's very nice. But I do mm -hmm. use the Hobbs 8020 as well because uh, I, I purchased mine through Linda's and mm -hmm. they, it's actually where I bought this machine was from there because we used to live in Texas. Mm -hmm. And um, that, so they always have it. They always have it. And then recently Quilter's Dream ran out of, or it was going to be like eight weeks before they could mail it out. Mm -hmm. So I went and got another uh, roll of uh, the Hobbs 8020 from there. Mm -hmm. But the Quilter's Dream, you can buy it from, if you, if you have like a wholesale account, you can buy it in um, multiple bags of one kind, multiple size bags of one kind. Okay. Well, I'll have to try that. Yeah, yeah. It's, if you, it, I don't know if you have a, a business account or not. It took me years before I went and got one, yeah. um, just because of the paperwork and you know, the money and all that stuff. It just seems like, am I really this into it? <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know, yeah. Okay. So, um, do you have anything like any tips for anybody? Um. I would say if, if you're thinking about getting a long arm or you're, you know, just starting out to say you got your long arm, I wouldn't, you know, be intimidated by what everybody else does. Um, you know, start out with something simple like, uh, you know, swirls or not swirls. I'm getting confused or loops or, you know, a loop, just start loop. And every once in a while, you know, go around that loop once or twice, double loops because, you know, when you write cursive, sometimes you do loops and things like that. So, you know, your brain already knows how to do loops. Um, but, you know, don't be intimidated by everybody else because everybody else, you know, everybody has different length arms and that can determine how your, you know, designs come out or how fast you move. Uh, the machine can give you different swirls. So your, your quilting will not ever, nobody's quilting will ever look the same. So that's I think that's one great. of my yes. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for me? Um, let me think about it. I should have wrote something down. I thought about it last night. Um, oh, uh, how do you do your quilting intake? Like, if somebody wants to mail you a quilt, how do you? Um, work that into your schedule or how do you do that? Okay. I, I have you heard of uh Kanban? K it, uh, I'm sorry. Angela Walters was talking about this a long time ago. It's called Kanban K A N B A N I believe. And what it is, okay. it's like a sticky note system. So you put up like sticky notes. I'm going to show you. Um, oops, things are falling. Okay, it's kind of it's kind of weird how I have it because my window broke and then I put a thing in there. But those are the sticky notes. So the first row is custom, and then all of which I don't have any right now. And then this is um, computer work and stuff I need to buy and stuff I want to do. You know. Uh -huh. So then I can look up here and see, you know, oh, I finished that one, you uh -huh. know, and I can see where I'm, where I'm at kind of with that. But then the other thing that I do is I'll, um, I have an intake form. I just set up a website on Squarespace. Uh 
and it has a form on there. And I use that form for people to fill out before they send me their quilts because mm -hmm. sometimes I'll forget what they said. And mm -hmm. that way I can reference it to exactly what they want. Right. Um, you can go to Squarespace and look at it. There's another lady and I'll send you her link that sent out if you're interested. She sent out a thing on everything that you need to put in your form. And it's okay. just like a, um, like a to do of what should be on there. Um, before I did Squarespace, I did it on Google Forms. And then I could mm -hmm. just like email that form out to people and then they would fill it out, send it back to me. I could send them a quote. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how that would work. I prefer for people to mail their quilts in, but it doesn't always happen that way. Mm -hmm. And with us not being in guilds and stuff, you know, I'd have mm -hmm. to go and meet people in town at Joanne's or at their house, which is far for me. And um, mm -hmm. so that would take up a couple of hours per quilt if you start timing how much time you spend per quilt. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I over or I underestimate the time that it's going to take me because I have other things going on. And I think I only think if I'm in here five days a week, how long it'll take. But I forget to think about, you know, we have farm animals and my kids, you know, or, you know, stuff like that comes up where you've got to go to the grocery store or you have to do stuff um, that you didn't plan for. And so it takes longer. So now I've been trying to overestimate, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to custom quilts. It, it mm -hmm. just, it always takes me longer than I think. Mm -hmm. That does you some good ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the form thing is really nice. Um, just if you have, just even if you have melon or somebody hands it over mm -hmm. to you, it, it's nice to be able to reference back to what they wanted mm -hmm. without having to write everything down. Okay. I'll have to try that out. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think so. Okay, well, I'm going to post, what I'm trying to do is collect a whole bunch of these interviews, and um, mm -hmm. I'm calling them Conversations with Long Armors, Beginners to Pros, because it's from the, you know, from our page, our group, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to put it on Patreon, but you'll have free access to all of them, and mm -hmm. um, once I get the, I have Patreon set up, but I don't have any videos on there yet, so once okay. I start putting videos on there, I'll send you a link so that you can get on and see all the other ones. Okay. It's, it, every interview, it gets a little bit better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hopefully I can get some better internet access and uh, get a, I think I'm going to try my um, a hot spot on my phone. That might work. Yeah. yeah. Well, take care. It's really good meeting you. Yes. You too. Have a wonderful day. You too.